we are living in a very interesting time when it comes to theological education in North America. In the Association of Theological Schools, which is the largest accreditor of graduate theological schools in North America, uh, most of the institutions are in numerical decline. The average American undergraduate student uh, accrues about $40,000 of student debt. You know, that's undergraduate. Now you bring that to a seminary, now they're saying that the average seminary student accrues another $40,000 of student debts. So you, you, you graduate from seminary with $80,000 in yeah, debt, you're, you're dead and then the you, water. Try yeah. and, you try and serve a small church, mm -hmm. or go into bivocational <laughs> ministry, or be a campus minister where you have to raise your own support, or go to the mission field where you have to raise your own support, or be an assistant or an associate chap pastor on a church that's not large and, and wealthy, and you're in trouble. And so we're, we're seeing that contribute to uh, the decline in enrollment in, in theological seminaries. And then seminaries in responding to that have, have tended to say, well, the, the best way to hold down the cost of theological education is to reduce the requirements and the credit hours of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So now you give them less while they are in seminary and then they have to go out and lead the church of tomorrow. That's a recipe for disaster. So in, in that context of, of theological education, RTS is very serious about holding the standards. Um, the way we're trying to respond to this is through holding down the costs of theological education through scholarships, uh, through church internships, but without diminishing the requirements, mm -hmm. the, the curriculum, uh, the expectations of what you're going to get in seminary. It, it, I just hit on one other issue, and if, if if I knew which camera to look into, I'd look <laughs> right into it and make sure everyone gets this right there. Yeah. Uh, there is this mistaken notion that most people can just pick up enough by reading some good books, um, listening to some lectures online, following some stuff on YouTube, going to the good conferences, and all of that we're thankful for, and we all participate in some of that. But whenever and wherever possible, there still is no substitute to actually be in a place with other real-life students. We're thankful for you know the, the ways that some distance learning can help mitigate some of those requirements, but not as an ultimate substitute. I just always am telling men because the, often their first instinct is, couldn't I just kind of get this on my own, or couldn't I just do this from the Internet and say, Brother, you will not regret going there for two or three or four or five years and actually sitting there and learning from it. I mean, is, is that too, I know it's a sacrifice, but is that too big of an investment for what hopefully will be 40 or 50 years of fruitful ministry? It's just when you do the math like that, of course you'd want to get all the training you can. The rest of your ministry life, you're going to be giving out, 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 output, output, output. So to take a few years and have constant input and people to guide you who are smarter and wiser and older than you, there's, there's no substitute for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the decline of seminaries is, is, is you hinted at this as a direct result or directly connected to this sort of democratization of yeah. knowledge in our world, right? The idea that no one's really that smarter than anybody else and I can get it in a bunch of different ways and there's no, there's no experts anymore. Uh, recent Oxford University press book I've been thumbing through called The Death of Expertise yeah. touches on this, this idea that People downplay that there's anybody who knows more than them, and they can always acquire this information through other sources. And so now, like you said, the non-traditional route, everyone thinks, well, then I can just read a few books and look on the internet and download some classes, and I can be there, right? What if someone tried to do that with medicine? You know, if you went to your doctor and you said, hey, you know, I don't see a degree hanging on your wall, where'd you go to medical school? And the guy's, well, I, you know, I didn't really think medical school was that important. I, I watched some videos on YouTube about how to do surgery, and <laughs> I read a couple books, and, uh, you know, I've got this... Uh, buddy of mine who's a doctor, ask him some questions now and then. So, hey, you know, I feel like I'm pretty yeah. well equipped. You know, so what's yeah. your problem? You'd be looking for the exits, you know. <laughs> um, but yet when it comes to the uh, sort of doctors of the soul, we just give it a pass. And so I, I just think seminaries have to be maintained as a central grid by which people get trained. I tell guys, I can't save you the work, the time, the effort that it's going to take. But I can save you the money. We'll, we'll be more cost efficient than any other se seminary in the Reformed Evangelical world. We get more scholarship than any other seminary in the Reformed Evangelical world. But we're not going to lower our standards because we've got to be there 
for the whole of evangelicalism with the people that we're producing. And I, I just think that as, as we think about this world that we're living in, in terms of theological education and the culture, I mean, the culture is, mm -hmm. this is an interesting cultural moment to be living in. Because of this cultural situation, pastors need to know more, not less. We don't want to just do theology for the theology's sake. We want to take it to the world that's currently hostile towards us and doesn't agree with us. And so we're asking the kind of questions, how can we be more uh, full orb than our arguments? How can we be more persuasive in the way we present the faith? Why? Because we want to do more than just think about things. We want to reach people with the gospel. And so I just think those two feed each other. The reason RTS is committed to apologetics and good theology is because we're before that committed to the Great Commission.